afternoon, my name is Josh from Cyclops Oz and this is your detailed afternoon update on Tropical Low 12U which is located out into the Coral Sea and a significant rainfall and potentially even a wind threat towards northern Queensland. There's been a bit of a change in the forecast and we're beginning to see this southerly track trend take shape which means that we could be in for some very significant rainfall across the central uh, Queensland coastline through the Whitsundays and the Mackay area along with that very significant rainfall accumulations that we've been talking about for the last couple of days across northern and far northern Queensland as well. I'll have all the details as to what you can expect in your neck of the woods and how strong this system is going to get and whether or not it's actually going to become a tropical cyclone in this forecast update. So if you're brand new to my channel, please do consider subscribing and go and check out the Facebook page as well. Let's just dive straight into the details right now. This is where Tropical Low 12U is located, pretty much due north now of uh, Willis Island or thereabouts and due east of Cooktown in the far north Queensland coastline. Over the past 24 hours, we have had some good rainfall accumulations across parts of far northern Queensland with the shower and thunderstorms coming across into the far north coast. In fact, we have had a couple of hundred millimetres at a few spots, particularly along the Casbury coast, and some heavy rainfall now falling into the Daintree area, so think Wonga Beach, Mossman, Daintree Village, and then out towards Mount Carbine, where some heavy falls have been reported throughout the course of today as well. You can see this is still very much a monsoonal based uh, weather system. We've got a long line of persistent shower and thunderstorms kind of extending across uh, this black line here. Strong northwesterly flow here coming into the top end of the system and a strong southerly flow here or a strong southeasterly flow I should say that's streaming in towards northern Queensland on the backside of this system which is making this quite an elongated system. Now that's one thing to, that's very important to understand right now is that it is a broad, messy and elongated mess. Elongated basically means stretched like a sausage and that's what this system is right now, that's the best way that I can. It's like a uh, cocktail sausage. That's what this system is looking like right now on the wind map. Um it is expected to organise itself up a little bit better in the next couple of hours. In fact, we may see this de uh, develop into a tropical cyclone sometime in the next 24 hours, but it does really have a lot of work to do. And that brings me on to my second point, which is we shouldn't really be worrying about whether or not this becomes a tropical cyclone, because for those on the ground up in far northern Queensland, it is going to feel like a tropical cyclone. Let's just circle back to some of these wind observations here. Willis Island, nearly 30 knots now out of the east, 28 knots here at Flinders Reef. And a couple of observations down here, 25 to 30 knots, gusting up to about 40 knots now at Hamilton Island, or it has been gusting close to 40 knots throughout the whole day at Hamilton Island. So uh, whilst these winds in themselves aren't anything strong or cyclonic yet, it gives you the idea that this system here is producing gale force winds around its centre, and it is also growing stronger as well on the wind side of things. So it is beginning to feel like a tropical cyclone for some, and for some of the videos that I have seen coming out of northern Queensland today, it looks like a Category 1 tropical cyclone, even though it is located very far out to sea. So that re um, reinforces my point that we shouldn't really be worried about, worrying about whether or not it's getting up to cyclone status or not because it doesn't really change the outcome that much. If it does, it'll be a brief, weak tropical cyclone. If it doesn't, it's just going to be a strong monsoonal mess, potato, potato at the end of the day in terms of impacts and the end result across far northern Queensland. Let's talk about those impacts right now and see what this storm is forecast to do. You can see right now elongated mess out in the Coral Sea forecast to strengthen and deepen a little bit throughout the course of tonight into tomorrow. And by tomorrow morning, if it is a tropical cyclone, it will have to do so tomorrow morning into early tomorrow afternoon. That's its best chance in its window for intensification. Likely to tighten up a little bit, but you can see it's not going to be moving very far or very fast in this time frame. By tomorrow afternoon, we're expecting the system to be a little bit closer to the north Queensland coastline, which means showers and thunderstorms likely what we've seen over the past 24 hours will pick up once again tonight into tomorrow and they'll really ramp up from tomorrow night onwards. And considering this low being closer to the coastline, areas north of Hamilton Island through the Sundays and up towards Townsville and Cairns and then right up through the Cape York Peninsula to about Cooktown, we are expecting these strong wind gusts to return from tomorrow afternoon onwards. They could be as strong as 45 knots in a few locations, particularly for exposed coastal areas and maybe even some elevated areas as well as this system brushes up against the North Queensland coastline. Pushing things out even further, this is on Saturday morning. You can see it making its final approach down towards uh, it's expected crossing of the Queensland coastline. Diving down towards the south, it will make a bit more of a southwesterly turn through Saturday afternoon and evening, but you can see we are expecting the real deal to begin to arrive from Saturday afternoon onwards. Heavy rainfall and some very strong wind gusts associated with it. It's the areas out towards the east and the southeast of this tropical low or tropical cyclone at this point that we really need to be worrying about, and they're going to be getting themselves ashore uh, around the Sundays, the central and the north coast, so think Hamilton Island, Mackay, Bowen, Air, Guru and Townsville from about midday onwards on Saturday depending on where you are and depending on how fast this storm does come into the coastline but definitely starting to deteriorate conditions wise from about mid-afternoon on Saturday. 
that being the 10th of January. This system here will then brush up against the North Queensland coastline. It now is looking like it's uh, taking that southerly track right into the areas around the uh, air or the air, air, early beach area. We're likely to see some significant wind gusts at this point in time, but Saturday night into early Sunday morning is when this storm is expected to either brush up against the coast or cross the coast. And right now that looks likely to happen somewhere on the Cassidy coast or around the Townsville area. Not 100% sure where exactly it's going to be right now. It does kind of depend on where this storm does make that southerly turn which we just don't know exactly where it's going to be right now. But again, we're not honing in on a landfall site right now. That's another thing that I've got to mention at the start of the forecast update. We're not worried about where exactly this system crosses the coastline because it could happen in Townsville. It could happen in uh, the Burdekin River mouth. It could happen all the way up in Cairns still. The possibilities are, for all intents and purposes, still relatively speaking, endless. What we're worried about is what's going to happen on the southern side of this storm here or the southeastern side. We are expecting a big area of very heavy rainfall and strong winds to push up against the North Queen Queensland coastline and that's like I said expected to cross the coast or begin crossing the coast from Saturday afternoon with conditions slowly deteriorating through Saturday night and then through Sunday morning as this storm properly makes its crossing of the coastline we are expecting those conditions get really ugly for a few locations. We're not talking about severe tropical cyclone or severe tropical cyclone equivalent here so let's keep that in mind but category one maybe even category two strength wind gusts are possible associated with some of the heaviest showers and shower bands and from Saturday lunchtime onwards very heavy rainfall is expected to kick in across much of the north and the central Queensland coastline. Now, in terms of who's going to see the heaviest rainfall and the strongest winds, it really does depend on where this storm kind of, relatively speaking, crosses the coast. If we see that northerly track, that's going to make Townsville the ground zero. If we see that southerly track and it actually tracks over Townsville, then we're going to see Mackay down to Rockhampton being the ground zero here. So there's still a few possibilities. My thoughts right now is anywhere between Townsville down to about Yapoon, excluding Rockhampton, but including Mackay, the Whitsundays, Hamilton Island, Bowen, Proserpine, all of those areas, as well as Townsville, are likely to see some very strong wind and some very heavy rainfall through Sunday night, Sunday, and then into early Monday morning as the system crosses the coast and makes its quote unquote landfall, depending on whether or not it is a tropical cyclone. So those are the areas that we need to be watching out for very closely. Definitely Mackay right now. That's one thing that's become very clear in the last 24 hours is that Mackay is going to be the ground zero here for a significant amount of rainfall and likely a significant amount of wind as well. You can see sustained winds don't really get that strong. 30 to 35 knots is kind of what we're expecting here. But gusts do start to push up into the 45 to 50 knot range, particularly around the Mackay and the Sundays area. We are likely to see some significant wind gusts there. Um, in terms of rainfall accumulations, it's still a bit difficult to say for sure how much rainfall is coming through because, again, it does depend on how far north this low pressure system comes across the coastline. But we're starting to get a good idea that we are going to see some very significant rainfall accumulations around the Mackay area, particularly into the uh, Clark Ranges outside of Mackay, around the Prospine River catchment area, and then through much of the lower and the upper Burdekin up into the Herbert River catchment. We're likely to see rainfall that's going to be enough to warrant some moderate or even major flooding in these areas. Now, keep in mind, we haven't seen a boatload of rainfall in this area so far this storm season, but it's not going to take as much water to flood these areas as it would, say, for northern Queensland or for areas up in the tropics, for example, because we're talking about a subtropical area here. Now, the Burdekin is a river that I'm beginning to get increasingly concerned about. There's also a number of rivers through parts of um, central Queensland that uh, I'm sure people in the comments will be naming and asking about as well that I'm starting to get particularly concerned about too. The Prospine River is one of them uh, and what's the one that uh, runs through Mackay, the Pioneer? That's also another river that I'm substantially concerned about now in terms of being a significant flooding risk. Um, we're looking at at least 200 to 250 millimetres in this white circle, likely pushing closer to about three or 400 millimetres in a few spots, particularly into the Pro uh, Prospine and the Pioneer River catchments into the Clark Ranges. We may even see some isolated rainfall accumulations approaching eight or 900 millimetres in these areas as well. So that keep, it gives you a bit of an idea that a prolonged uh, 36 to 48 hour period of heavy rainfall is going to come through. And we're likely to see some very significant rainfall accumulations as a result. But we've got sea temperatures like what we do offshore from the North Queensland coast here, 28 pushing 29 in a few spots. It's more than enough energy to really get some significant moisture out of the water and into the clouds and into these tropical lows. And as such, I do believe because this is going to be a bit of a slow burner and a bit more of a prolonged uh, tropical low slash tropical cyclone impact, I do reckon we're going to see some very significant rainfall accumulations as a result consequently from this low pressure system with the heaviest rainfall starting on Saturday at about lunchtime, moving through Sunday and then clearing off a little bit on Monday and Tuesday. And you can see here on the axis, which is definitely a little bit more of an aggressive forecast model, but we're looking at about 700, pushing close to 800 millimetres in one or two spots here just outside of Mackay. So looking at some very big rainfall accumulations coming through in a quick period of time, we're likely to see some significant flooding in these areas. 
Now let's talk about those impacts. While we're talking about rainfall, let's touch on the flooding risk here. Daintree and for areas north of Cairns, including the Barren River, minor flooding is going to be possible. In fact, minor flooding is already occurring in a number of spots up here because of the rainfall that came through last night. We are likely to see this drop down a little bit tonight, but still some heavy falls expected tomorrow, which will raise rivers back up to the minor flood alerts. We may see some moderate flooding into the Daintree River. We may not. We're just going to have to watch this situation quite closely, but I don't think it's going to be anything like what Tropical Cyclone Jasper brought through. So that is always good news. The Casper Coast, excluding the Herbert and Seymour, we're likely to see minor flooding in all of the rivers through the Casper Coast, increasing to moderate flooding for the Tully and the Johnston Rivers. We could definitely be seeing some significant rises to water levels there. And depending on how much rainfall comes through tomorrow night, we may also see major flooding in parts of the Tully and the Johnston Rivers as well. They are saturated and they're rising very quickly from very little rainfall, comparatively speaking, for far north Queensland. So that is a bit of a flooding concern. The Herbert and the Seymour River and parts of the Upper Burdekin. Significant rainfall accumulations here will likely result in moderate flooding. In one or two spots, we may see major flooding, but I'm not overly confident right now on the major flooding outlook for the Herbert River. I do definitely reckon we're going to see a reduction in the threat for the Herbert River, though, especially if the storm does actually come through the Herbert area, heading out towards Greenvale and outside of Charters Towers. We'll see less rainfall in this area as a result. But this is definitely some good news for the Herbert River catchment, but still minor flooding very likely to occur. Moderate flooding is now a possibility, uh, and major flooding still on the cards, not off the cards yet, but it is a reducing chance for a reduction in possibilities. The Burdekin and the rivers around the Harvey Ranges and into towns where we are likely to see moderate flooding in these areas. We may even see major flooding at one or two spots into the Burdekin, particularly the closer you get to the coastline. We could be seeing some very significant water level rises in these areas as well. So moderate flooding is possible, minor flooding likely through Townsville. They have done uh, water releases from the Ross River Dam, which is good news, but still likely to see some significant water level rises in those areas. The Pioneer River, I'm going to go out and say that if this forecast holds strong, we will see major flooding in the Pioneer River. You definitely want to be ready for some moderate flooding right now. Minor flooding is all but guaranteed for the Pioneer and the Prospine Rivers, but we are likely to see moderate flooding as well, and major flooding for both the Pioneer and the Prospine Rivers not being ruled out right now. The Pioneer River, likely to see minor flooding, also a possibility to see moderate flooding right now. It doesn't take an awful lot to cause flooding in the Pioneer, particularly up towards minor flooding, but uh, to get up towards major, we'd be talking about some very serious rainfall accumulations. Putting it simply and putting it nicely, big time rainfall accumulations are forecast in this area, and this is a real big concern. I mean, not only do we have a lot of population in this part of Queensland compared to what we would be having in far northern Queensland, but we've also got a massive mining industry out here that could be shut down off of 100 millimetres of rainfall, and it's likely that we will see far more than that streaming through these areas, particularly Sunday and Monday onwards. So this will be another big concern as well as the economic losses from mining and uh, transport in this part of Queensland. So another fact that we are going to need to keep close tabs on as well. Now, further south into the Capricornia coastline and through parts of the Wide Bay area, it's a bit more of a wild card. I do still think we will see some significant falls around the Yapoon and even the Rockhampton area. Falls above 100 millimetres are now a possibility for those areas. But for Gladstone, Bundaberg and Harvey Bay and also into the Fraser Coast as well, a little bit more of a tricky forecast down there. So I'm going to refuse from commenting on these areas south of about Agnes Water. Uh, for the time being. Rockhampton definitely likely to see some significant rainfall, though at least 100 millimetres coming through, and this will likely penetrate deep in towards central Queensland as well. In fact, with all major forecast models now sort of favouring this track here, even though landfalling it in Queensland, all of them are kind of favouring this track here that takes it further in towards the Queensland uh, central regions. We are likely to see some very significant rainfall accumulations in this area here, uh, but this will likely happen Sunday, Monday and Tuesday onwards. So we'll touch on this at a future time frame, but Claremont, Moranbar, Glendon, uh, Emerald, Long reach you end and all likely to see some significant rainfall accumulations and unfortunately this also throws flood ravaged northwestern Queensland back into the mix because again Greenvale, you end and Charters Towers, Richmond they've been smashed with rainfall lately um, and we do have some more rainfall now on the cards for those areas so that is not good news for those locations at all not in the slightest so Another factor that is worth keeping an eye on. In terms of winds and wind speeds, um, marinas and marina-based boats across the North Queensland coastline, it's time to check your ropes. It's time to make sure that everything is ship shape and ready to go for some very strong wind gusts. Like I said, gusts could likely approach 50 knots here anywhere between Townsville down to about Rockhampton. This includes Mackay and the Whitsunday. So get the boat up off the trailer. Boat ramps will be very busy now at this time of the year as well. So keep that in mind. Um, tighten your ropes up as well. Uh, uh, make sure that they are ready for a storm tide as well. So Make sure that whilst they are tight, uh, you, the boat can rise so that you don't obviously sink it or pull the jetty apart. Um, the, Northern Queensland is reasonably well built for events like this. I mean, we are going to be talking about a bit of a storm tide here that could be half a metre to a metre above the highest astronomical tide, but the wave forecast isn't exactly ideal. Five and a half metres offshore now, and this is up from yesterday's forecast of about four and a half, so seas are definitely going to get up there. 
The good thing is a lot of this is going to keep be coming out of the north, which means for the most part, Mackay and much of the Witch Sundays will actually be a little bit more protected as opposed to what happened with Tropical Cyclone Debbie, where we had those winds and those waves ripping in here from the um, east. So this is a good uh, good situation here for parts of Mackay and the Witch Sundays, but definitely some big waves can be expected around Hammy Island and then around the Bowen area as well. So keep that in mind. Of course, marine-based activities this weekend, all but off the cards across far northern Queensland. We will keep that in mind as well, or a good idea to keep that in mind at this point in time with those waves waves and those winds, it will be very unpleasant, very stormy and very wet indeed. Um, in terms of wildcard factors here in regards to what this tropical low or tropical cyclone could do, there's not really that many of them in terms of the impacts. We are expecting the system to get itself into the coastline now around the North Queensland area, which means the rainfall for the Casper Coast has since been reduced, but I do definitely think we're going to see, you know, a thousand millimetres plus at at least one or two locations, especially into the Harvey Range, particularly if the storm does actually go over the Harvey Ranges area. But we could also be seeing some thousand millimetre plus accumulations into the Clark Ranges as well. So that'll be another significant factor to keep an eye on. And far North Queensland, they're no strange to a metre of rainfall falling in a couple of days, but this part of Queensland, the central coast of Whitsundays, a metre of rainfall is big news. That's a really big deal. So this could end up being quite a concern. Um, in terms of how this would stack up to Tropical Cyclone Debbie's flooding, um, it, it is likely to be a lot lesser than Tropical Cyclone Debbie, but we're talking about a almost similar amount of rainfall coming through for a few locations. So it's a good idea to keep that in mind right now and to really use Debbie as the benchmark and make preparations according to Tropical Cyclone Debbie. I think that's a good standard because then there is no way you won't be prepared for absolutely every scenario in this event here, in this weather event coming through. And in terms of wind speeds, this will be absolutely nothing like Tropical Cyclone Debbie. So that's also another important thing to um, think about and consider right now. In terms of the risk for southeastern Queensland, there's been a bit of a talk about as to whether or not this is actually going to slide down in towards southeast Queensland eventually, or are we going to see another tropical low, you know, be spun out of the Coral Sea and then into the southeast Queensland coastline? Well, for Brisbane and the Gold Coast, there's very limited chance in the way of another tropical cyclone coming down there in the next uh, couple of weeks. And in terms of rainfall, there's an even more limited chance, actually. Um, we're talking about basically a 5% chance of any impacts into southeast Queensland uh, throughout the duration of this weather event. So that's another thing to keep in mind right now is that southeast Queensland is likely to be completely high and dry as a result of this weather event. No rainfall, no thunderstorms, or maybe a few showers here and there, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, but um, nothing in the way of serious rainfall, nothing in the way of serious um, wind or thunderstorm activity at this point in time. So. Uh, yeah, that's, you know, a bit of good news down there. Definitely something that they will be uh, quite happy with and quite happy to hear right now. But yeah, this storm, it does have a bright future ahead of it. That's for sure. It's looking okay right now. I mean, it's, it's looking a little bit worse for wear compared to where it was this morning and where it has been over the last couple of days. But, you know, for a monsoon low, it's doing... Um, all right right now and it does like I said also have a bright future ahead of it in terms of what rainfall it's going to drop across Queensland where it's going to be tracking I mean it's got a pretty favorable life all things considered warm sea temperatures high humidity low wind shear it's just the fact that it's super broad and super messy and super disorganized right now and time is just not favoring this system if it had another couple of days offshore then it definitely could get up towards tropical cyclone status and then we could be calling about all sorts of impacts across parts of north and far northern Queensland but for now, it's definitely more of a rain threat. Um, let's not get bogged down in the details as to whether or not this becomes a tropical cyclone or not, because it is going to feel like a tropical cyclone for many, particularly across the far north coast and also into parts of the Whitsundays and the central coast as well, Mackay, Hammy Island, those areas. It is going to feel like a tropical cyclone for you a weak one, but it is definitely going to feel like one. Uh, so mark my words on that. If you have any further questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. Shoot me a message over on Facebook as well. A massive thank you to 100,000 over on Facebook. That is a big number and a number that I'm very, very proud of and very appreciative of as well. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, of course, um, and make sure to leave a comment and leave a like on the video as well. If you're wondering why the narration is a little bit quick or shoddy or different from usual, I am under the weather right now. It's always a tropical cyclone curse, I think. Uh, FINA, and now this system here, the last two times that I've been sick in the last two years. So not very happy with that. But that is going to do it for today's weather forecast update, and I will catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.